Okay, so welcome back. This is part two in our series where we're going to show you how to develop this simple application you see here. And this is C-Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And um, I've got a lot of other um, software development videos on this channel. I encourage you to take a look. And if you've never developed software before, you've never written a software application, I encourage you to look at my three-part series for beginners and how to write a simple C-Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application with a UI like this. So in this video, we're going to um, take the next step and show the actual code to make this happen. Now, I really encourage you to look at part one where we talk about what this is, why we're doing it, and how it works. And we went through the most important part of this, which is the design. How are we going to lay out this application? How are we going to get it to do what you see it doing here? And what we're doing here is we have an animation, an animated bitmap image that's updating about 30 times a second. And it's drawing this animation. And this is what's called the Lisa Jew pattern. We talked about it in the previous video. And we've got some track bars here that allow us to change some parameters in the equations that define this animation, define these curves. And as you can see up here, it's a couple of sine wave equations. And we're basically modifying this in real time to change the animation. So um, again, I encourage you to look at part one. And uh, what we'll do now is we'll go into the code and see how we can implement this. So here is our simple c -sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. I assume you're going to know how to um, put this together. If not, look at my previous videos. And here is the design, and it shows the different components in our application's form. So in this design, we just go to Toolbox, and we have to add, we have to drag and drop some of these components. Uh, this one here is a picture box. We've talked about picture boxes before. So just drag and drop a picture box. You can see we've got three buttons. So we drag and drop three buttons, and we're naming them Button Start, Button Stop, and Button Exit. And um, in order to get the event handlers, of course, you double click on each of those and we'll show you the event handler code. And then we have some track bars. We need to drag and drop two track bars. And I talked previously about track bars and how they work. I encourage you to look at that. We've got some labels that is going to give us some real time feedback on the value of the track bar as we modify it. And we've also got this, which is one big label that's got some feedback that explains what this application is doing. You may not need this, but this is here just to make it a little bit easier. And it just says this code calculates a Lisa Jew pattern using the equations. And it's got a value for X and a value for Y. It also increments the fee value, which you see here on this X equation, each time step. And in our case, it's going to be 30 times a second to animate the pattern. So we're tweaking this fee, which is giving us the animation. Now, the only other component we have is down here, we have a timer. And we talked about previously, we need a timer. In our case, it's going to be set for 1 30th of a second. Or if you see over here, the interval is 30 milliseconds. So that's going to give us about 30 frames every second for the animation. That's going to update. So again, you double click on this timer to get the event handler. And that's about it. There's really not much to this. A picture box, uh, some track bars, some buttons, and a timer. So let's go into the form one and see how we can implement this. So here is the code. And I've laid it out similar to just about all the other code I've shown in my previous videos on this channel. We're using regions, pound region and pound end region. We've got some documentation. We've got some of the main parameters that we're going to use. We've got our main form one where we initialize things. Uh, we've got two methods, one to draw background and one to map ranges. Again, we talked about that in the previous video. And then we've got some event handlers. We've got three event handlers for the start, stop, and exit buttons. And they're really not going to do much. The important thing is this timer one tick event handler that we get from double clicking on this timer one control. And this is where all the work is going to be done. And you can see here is the code that we're going to use to generate the animation. So let's first take a look at some of the basic stuff here. We've got some using statements. 
Uh, these are going to be automatic using system, system.drawing, and system.windows.forms. And here is our main form one. I've got some docs, which is basically a repeat of what we've got here in this label, and then some parameters. So um, here we've got some values to determine the dimensions of this picture box. Now keep in mind, there's not only a picture box here, but we're going to generate a bitmap, as we talked about before, and we're going to fit it inside this picture box, and we're going to update that bitmap to show the animation. So we've got a picture box, so we need the dimensions are going to be 400 pixels by 400 pixels, and we're also going to define a new bitmap, which is the background, the black background. We're going to call it background. It's a new bitmap, and the dimensions are X dimension and Y dimension, which is 400 by 400. So we've got a picture box and also a bitmap with the same dimensions. And then we're going to define two system drawing dot color values. One is background color, and we're going to call it color dot black. And then the pixel color, when we draw the uh, animation, we draw the waveforms, that is going to be color dot yellow. You can change those to whatever you want. And here we are defining the parameters of our sine waves. And we have picked A equals 10, B equals 10, phi equals 0, and phi delta equals 0.1. So this is, we're going to increment the phi value in that sine wave equation by 0.1 every time step, right? And that's going to be every 1 30th of a second or 30 milliseconds. So we're going to increment it, and that's going to cause a different value in the sine wave, uh, which is going to cause the animation. And then we've got the alpha and beta, these track bars, alpha and beta, and again, those are parameters in our two equations. So we're going to just uh, figure out the default as we start up the application. We're going to set the alpha track bar at 3 and the beta at 2.5. So now that we've got our components, uh, what's going to happen, we're going to run our application, we're going to do the standard initialize component, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call this draw background method that we made. So here we go into methods real quick, and it doesn't do a whole lot. It basically goes uh, a for loop, it goes from 0 to the x dimension, and then from 0 to the y dimension, and takes this background bitmap and does a set pixel to set each pixel color in that background bitmap, which is 400 by 400 or 160,000 pixels, something like that. And it's setting the pixel of pixel value x, y, and it's setting it the background color. So it's going through 160,000 pixels and setting them all to black. That's all it does. So now that we've drawn our background, now what we can do is set our picture box width to the same dimensions of 400 width and 400 height. And now that we've got the, the background black image, we're going to set the picture box one dot image to this background bitmap. All right, and that's a bitmap that we already defined. So now as we start it up, we, we are showing in the picture box a black background, and we are going to set the track bar default values TRK alpha, which is the track bar, we named it TRK alpha, the value will be 3, and track bar beta value will be 2. So now we can run it, and you can see it just starts up, and it just fills it with a black background. It's waiting for us to start the animation. Now this text I already added in the properties for the label, so we don't have to worry about that. So now what's going to happen is we have to wait for the user to press the start button. So the timer isn't enabled yet. We have to press the start button. And all that's going to do, the event handler for the start button, is timer1.enabled equals true. So now the code should transfer over to this timer1 tick event handler, which will do all the work. And it's going to happen every 30 milliseconds. So let's take a look at this, and this is all the code we're going to use. So the first thing we have to do is we've got to take that background black image and we have to clone it because we want to draw our first waveform 
for the first time step on that black background. And that's going to change every time step, but we want to take that background and clone it as bitmap, and we're going to call it foreground. And that foreground, we're going to display in the picture box each time step, or every 30 milliseconds. And now we've got our foreground bitmap, and what we can do is we can set the pixels of this foreground black bitmap with the yellow values of the waveforms. We first have to grab the alpha and beta values that the user has set from the track bars, and we're going to display them in these labels. So we're going to read what did the user set and display them in the labels. So um, we're going to call alpha is convert to double the trk alpha dot value, same with beta, convert to double trk beta dot value. And then we're just going to set the label alpha dot text is alpha equals and whatever that alpha value to string, and same with the beta, right? So now we have to go through and loop, as we talked about before, and for each waveform, we're going to calculate, in this case, 2,000 points to represent the entire waveform for one frame, or 1 30th of a second. So we're doing a lot of calculating here. Um, so we're going to step through this 2,000 times with a T value in our equation. And you can see uh, each of these sign values has an alpha times t plus v and a beta times t. So that is the t that we're going to be calculating. So we're stepping through 2,000 times and we're defining a sim time. We're defining an actual t value from this integer. And what we're doing is we're doing a convert to double this integer value, multiplying it times 0.01 to get the time that we're going to feed into these sine wave equations, the sim time. And in this case, it's going to go from 0 to 20 seconds. Now, you can modify this however you want, but I've just got it set for um, a 0.01 times these 2,000 points. So now we've defined the time that we want to put into our sine wave equations to calculate the x and the y values. So since the sine value returns a value of minus 1 to 1, the variables x and y will vary from minus a to a and minus b to b. Now we have set a and b randomly to values of 10, so these x, value, x and y values will go from minus 10 to 10. So x will be a times math dot sine alpha times sim time plus phi, and then b times math times sine beta times sim time. So now that we've got actual values for the both sine waves, we need to do a map ranges. And we talked about this in the previous video. We we're talking about C++ and doing some very simple game simulations in C++. And we use this map ranges method that we developed to convert these X and Y values of the sine wave that go from minus 1 to 1 or minus 10 to 10 or whatever. And we have to convert those into pixel values to tell us where to draw the yellow pixels. So x picks and y picks are functions of this map ranges. So let's go take a look at map ranges and see what it does. Basically, um, we take our input value, x or y, and then we have to define the input and output ranges in our case, x can go from minus a to a, whatever that is, and the output, the pixel values, can go to tw from 20 to whatever the x dimension minus 20 is. And the reason is because we want to have a 20 pixel margin so we don't overdraw the bitmap. So let's look at the map ranges method and see what it does. So here we take an input value, and we want to figure out what the resulting pixel values are. So um, we've got a double in minimum, in maximum, and out minimum, and out maximum. Again, the input value can go from this minimum to this maximum, which is, in our case, minus a to a. Or if we're doing a y value, it's minus b to b. And then the out value is whatever the pixel range is, in our case 400 pixels, and we're going to have a 20 pixel margin. So all it does is it uses this equation. It comes out with a pixel, which is integer value, x integer value, 
and it's convert to in 32 and we take out max minus out min over in max minus in min times whatever value we're feeding in minus in min plus out min and then we're returning that out pixel value now i encourage you to look at the video on uh, range mapping we did before we go through and we talk about what all the stuff is i'm not going to go through it again but it's a pretty straightforward very useful um, method to convert a value to a, a different range so now that we've done that we have the actual x and y pixel value for each point each of these 2000 points we've got an x and y value that we can draw on the foreground bitmap now what we're going to do, instead of just drawing that one XY coordinate pixel, we're going to draw additional pixels around it to give us a thicker line that we're drawing. So we're going to draw a total of four pixels for each point to make a thicker line. And we're going to use the foreground.setPixel, which takes a X value and a Y value, or X coordinate and Y coordinate, with that whatever pixel color, and we define that as yellow. So we're taking the first one, which is the actual coordinate, X and Y coordinate, but then we're drawing another pixel with an X coordinate. We're adding a pixel value of one with the Y pixel. Then we're adding a pixel value of one and a Y pixel value of one. And then we're, add, we're doing an X pixel value with a Y pixel of one. So that'll give us kind of a square of values um, nearby this XY value. So now we have drawn one point in our foreground image that's going to be yellow and it's it's comprised of four pixels for each point and now we're going to go through and do that 2000 times so that we can draw the entire waveform for one time step so we're doing 2000 points for one time step and then what we're doing is we are displaying that in the picture box picture one box one dot image is whatever the foreground is and then we are incrementing this phi by phi delta, which we set to 0.1. And now it's going to go through again, the next timer tick, which is the next 30 milliseconds, is going to come back and do 2,000 more. So it's going to update the foreground image with the newest foreground waveform. And you're going to start to get the animation. So there's a lot of calculations going on in here, but it's pretty straightforward. We're just um, calculating the value of this and using that as the X and Y value and then displaying the image. So really that's the whole application. The only thing else we have here is the, we've got the start button, we've got the stop button, which just disables the timer. And then we've got the exit button. So application exit and that's it. So really that's the entire application that allows us to draw these really neat uh, XY patterns called Lisa Jew patterns and we can vary this and we can get different versions of that so that's about it for this one if you like any of these videos I encourage you to hit the like button subscribe hit the bell notifications but most of all please let others know that we're here so we get some views really appreciate it otherwise take care have a really good day thanks